Welcome, Thomas. Floor is yours. And once again, thank you for the library, New York Free Library, to making it possible. Yep. Peter, did you have a question? You have a, a look like you have a question. No, you good? Okay. So um, as uh, you, you mentioned, my name is Tom, uh, Tom Morell. I'm a uh, retired army guy, uh, but I still work for the government. I, I work at the military academy. Uh, I am actually the associate dean for information technology at the academy. Um, that and, uh, you know, that title and 50 cents will get you a half a cup of coffee. But um, I just want to point out that if you learn my background and the way that I conduct myself, I'm conducting business as a non-government employee. I, nothing that I say is to be taken, you know, as the, uh, the um, opinion of the military academy or West Point or anything of that nature. So it's just plain old Tom that is uh, throwing this out there. Just wanted to toss it out there. Um, much like uh, Yulia had mentioned, uh, let me share my screen here real quick. And, oh, this is really good. It doesn't show me, I go to share my screen and it doesn't tell me, uh, it's not giving me a picture of which screen is which, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. So, wow, um, this is kind of strange. Just a minute. Um, go with this one. Oh, this is kind of crazy. Okay, it is. When you click share your screen, and if you have multiple screens, you'll yeah. see multiple screens. Then you click on the screen that you want to share, and that's the one you share, or you yeah. can share everything. Yeah, I I just did the. Oh, here we go. Okay, now it's working. Okay, so you should be seeing my screen now, right? And um, much yes. like uh, Yulia had mentioned that uh, Newberg Free Library allows us to do these classes, which I'm very thankful for. Um, the website that uh, we will be working from and the website from which you will actually get your own fully operational website to, to play with for the next couple of weeks, um, that is sponsored by the United Brain Association. It's a new organization. I am um, a board member of the United Brain Association and they have been kind enough to pay for the hosting so that we can conduct these classes here. So um, so I, would, I just wanna thank them for that. Um, so for those of you, we, we, uh, part of my agenda was to ask, you know, hey, who is into what, who does what kind of things, uh, who are you? We kind of did that to, to start off with. Uh, so I don't want to take all that time to go through that. Um, but um, is there anybody out there that has absolutely no experience at all with um, WordPress? Like, like this is the first time you've, you've ever heard of WordPress. Okay, Jeff, I see your hand got raised. Anybody else? Yeah, I don't have much as I indicated earlier when we were talking. Okay. All right. So, um, so the 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 purpose for tonight, or this the the whole class actually is just an intro. Basically, what is WordPress? What's the difference between WordPress um, the dot com and WordPress WordPress dot org? What do some of the screens look like? What can I do with it? That type of thing. So we had talked to a few folks who were developers or ex-developers or getting back into it. We won't get a whole lot into development in the, in the class itself this time. Uh, since I know that a few of you are developers, perhaps we'll do a little bit on the next, um, on the next section, uh, session next week. 
Um, but tonight it's basically going to be kind of a terrain walk to take you through what the, what is WordPress, why or how many people use it, that type of thing. And then we'll talk about what does the, what do the screens look like and the things that are available to you. Uh, everybody okay with that? Any questions thus far? Okay, so, um, so this site here is Hudson Valley WordPress. Uh, it's open for you to come visit whenever you need. It's learn.hudsonvalleywordpress, WP. And uh, this is just kind of a, a, a terrain walk of what is WordPress, what are some development type things that, uh, that I use. So if you, you click into this, it'll just take you through a number of um, resources that are available to you. Some of the things that I use and, and use along the way. Um, the, uh, I pop back here, that's the terrain walk. And then this is for WordPress plugin development. For those of you that want to be developers, it's not just about plugins, but uh, a plugin is, is like extra code that you add to WordPress that provides you some additional functionality. But you don't have to do it as a plugin. There's a file called functions.php, which allows you to hook into various parts of the, the, the WordPress system and add your own functionality. So even if you're not interested in writing your own plugin, if you take a look at some of these WordPress hook guides and other things, it will give you some idea of, of what it is that you can do. Okay. Uh, so uh, that is under the WordPress link. Under helpful documents, if you go to uh, the plugin guide, so a plugin template. So here are here's a document that kind of lays out how do you do a plugin uh, from scratch. Uh, there's you know there's a there's a create a plugin there as well. Sounds like somebody's trying to buzz in here. Christine Belsey, okay. Um, so I these take are some, care of it, no worries. Okay, so these are some slides uh, that talk about plugins and theme development and custom functions. Um, if you're on the interested in the development side of things, uh, that would be helpful to you. And then this is an intro to PHP that I've written along the way. That just, if you're not a programmer, hopefully this just kind of breaks it down for you to give you an idea of, of some of the things in PHP. It's not all exhausting, uh, but I think that you'll find some useful things in here. Okay, so you can do that here. And this is my motto. I don't always test my code, but when I do, I do it on the production site because if it breaks, your whole site goes down. There's no more fun than that. Um, okay, so what I want to do now is, and you're welcome to follow me. Uh, the website is learn.hudsonvalleywp.com. And um, I'm just going to pop into that WP WordPress 101 right there. This is the my name and the address in which you can reach me. Uh, I also have an FL dot, uh, and, and NFL is uh, Newberg Free Library. NFL.instructor at Gmail works just as well if you're interested in that. Okay. I have any questions to this point? Anything at all? Just go ahead and chime in. I put the link in the chat, Great. the basic link, and okay. feel free to click WordPress 101. Yep, you're welcome to do that. So when we talk about WordPress, WordPress, uh, many people say, well, okay, I have a web website and it's made with WordPress, which basically means it's uh, WordPress is a content management system, which basically allows you to not only have a website, but it also provides you the ability to manage content, meaning you could have various articles or blog items or media items that you want people to be able to see. If you have a website, for instance, that uh, allow people or provide you the ability to share uh, recipes with people, um, all of that is there. And as Hunter mentioned early on, you know, there's the 
holy trinity of web development, right? HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. That is the core of, of um, if you will, the presentation and client side of materials. So when I say client side, I mean that the HTML, the JavaScript, and the CSS are, are rendered and act upon by the browser itself. So everything that you do in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, all of that activity actually happens on the client's machine, not on your web server. So if you happen to have very heavy JavaScript or very long, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 line long HTML pages, um, that could cause some issues on the client side because the client may or may not have a machine that handles it. But the HTML, the JavaScript and CSS, that all happens and is used by the client inside the browser. Did you have a question, Victor? Or no, okay. Sorry, I just happened to see you pop up there. Um, so that's what I mean when I talk about the client side. That's also referred to, and I'll refer to it quite often as the front end, right? You, you'll hear it called the front end or the client side. PHP on the other hand, and um, 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 Grant, I think made reference to it, or may have been Andrew, uh, to learn PHP. So PHP is really the kind of the guts and glory of what actually runs the WordPress uh, platform itself. That's where all the actual coding happens that causes things to be written to and from the database. It allows you to log in and out. It allows you to upload uh, media and pictures and other things to it. So the PHP is really the back end along with a, um, a database called MySQL. But that's really the back end, meaning that's what happens on your server when you, when you have a hosting company that you have a domain with, all of that PHP and all of that database stuff happens at the back end or on the server side. So, um, so that's where those separations are. I have any questions about that at all? Anybody want to add something to it? Those of you that are familiar with it, um, anything that I missed that you think is important? No? Okay. All right. So the PHP, the HTML, the JavaScript, CSS, that all comes together for this platform called WordPress. But it's not the only one that's out there. Um, there are other uh, systems out there, uh, uh, content management systems. Anybody know any names of any other systems that are out there or any other website building sites that are that you're familiar with? Sure, Tom. Uh, I've I've uh, I've worked with uh, .NET with so ASP.NET. I've worked with Pure ASP, uh, the precursor to .NET or ASP.NET, uh, and then I've also worked with uh, SharePoint, which is, I guess, Microsoft's uh, platform. Yeah. Uh, and in, in, in the experience I've had with uh, dealing with WordPress, I can see there are a lot of parallels like where they've attempted to do things, I, or at least I assume that they've picked up some of the things that have been done and tried making their own version of it. Uh, so... But those are the platforms I've dealt with. Yeah. Anybody else? Drupal. Uh, Drupal. Good. Django. Flask. Django. Um, and what was the other one? Django and Flask. Django. Yeah. Python based. Um, some of the hotter ones nowadays are uh, you've probably seen Wix. You've probably heard of Squarespace. Um, you may have heard of Joomla, those kinds of things. Um, so let's take a look. Why WordPress? And, and does anybody else use it? So I'm going to open this link. And, and Cam, Cam Shan, if you are about to say something, feel free to share in the chat or just right now. Oops. 
Who is that? Cam Shan was trying to say something. On the mute. Oh, he was. I'm sorry. It's okay. You don't need to see. Feel free to use on the chat. Yes. Thank you, Cam. Shopify. Okay. So why is my this is kind of crazy. I have no idea what these tabs are doing right now. This is nuts. Now you're sharing your Gmail with us. Yeah, I see that. And I can't figure out why. Uh, oh, I see the menu, the menu for the menu for uh, James is asking, can you develop member websites with WordPress? The short answer is yes. Member websites? Yes, absolutely. So um, what I wanted to show you here is, and I apologize for this, the, the menu for, um, for Zoom is right on top of my, of my uh, oh, there we go. All right. So now uh, if we take a peek here, this is the list. This is a website. Uh, it's still your w Gmail. It's still your Gmail. You're sharing your Gmail. Am I really? Yes. You can stop sharing and choose the window. Wow. The, the one you want to show. This. It looks like you just reset your password recently. <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay. And there was a question of Wix versus WordPress. So now do you see the... Uh, the W3 text website? Yes. Yes. Okay. So on here, it's what this chart is showing is, for instance, um, WordPress actually makes up 64.3% of the, of the world's websites for which they can determine um, that a, a, a content management system is being used. So of all the websites around the world that they're able to find, 64.3% of them that use a content management system are using WordPress. The 43% is, um, indicates that WordPress is being used overall by 43% of all websites. So you see it's a, it's a huge market share of what's being used to build websites online. And you see on some of those names, you'll recognize Shopify, Wix, Squarespace, Joomla, Drupal. But you look at those, they're all literally in the single digits of percent as to their, as to their use, um, which is really uh, amazing to me because I, I've heard a lot about Wix and Squarespace, but yet it's only a couple of percentage points of the overall use uh, on the web, which is kind of kind of crazy there. Um, if we look at um, how does it compare with other CMSs, right? So here are their rankings. And what this is showing you here is like, for instance, this orange line. Of the top 1,000 sites on the internet, 50% of them are running WordPress. Whereas with Shopify, it shows that of the top 100, 4.8% are running. So you see these numbers are actually a little higher for, for, for like Shopify and Wix, because now we're talking, if we look at just the top 1,000 websites, does that make sense to you? Anybody have any questions about those at all? Yes. Why is WordPress free? Why is it free? Yeah. That's a great question. So, uh, um, why there is open a, source is free? Most of open yeah. source is yeah, free. So yep. So WordPress is open source. So this this WordPress started out with a guy named Matt Mullenweg that him and his buddy decided to create this content management system and they built it 
on their own and decided to create what's called open source software. Open source software is basically software for which you can get the source code for that software and you can adapt to it, adapt it and add to it however which way you like. You could even download WordPress yourself, make a few changes and then issue it yourself as a product on your own, but it has to be offered, offered free, excuse me, based on the licensing. So um, it's been free, it continues to be free, but where that business plan comes from is, okay, WordPress is free and all of that, but you still need to have a place to host it. And unless you own your own server, you'll need to pay a hosting company. Additionally, it's very possible that, yep, I get WordPress and it's free, but I, I want to sell t-shirts on my website. And I really don't really understand how to do that. So let me hire somebody who's a WordPress developer or uh, somebody along those lines or designer that can help me do that. So much of the business that evolves around WordPress is um, not just uh, the, the ability or the design and development of, of custom stuff, but the support of custom stuff. You'll have people that say, you know, I will support your WordPress website for you for 50 bucks a month. I'll make sure all the updates are done. I'll make sure all the security stuff is handled, that type of thing. So much of the business plan around WordPress is around support and additional functionality. So for instance, if you buy a plugin, a plugin is a piece of software that somebody has written that adds additional functionality to WordPress. That code in and of itself um, you'll, you'll receive that code when you buy the product, but you're basically paying the, the, the developer for use of their code, but you now basically own that code. And uh, it, by the rules of WordPress, it also should be open source, but you typically pay $40, $30 for a plugin and in exchange for that $30, $40, you'll get a year of support for that product so that you can uh, get help to, uh, uh, to install it and configure it and that type of thing. But once you have the plugin, you quite literally have the source code and you can rewrite it any which way you want. Uh, there are, it's a general, that's a general statement in that there are some other rules about what the licensing is, but in order for it to be used with and for WordPress, uh, WordPress insists that it also be open source. Does that make sense? Or does anybody have any questions about what open source actually means? Thomas. Uh, yeah, just a couple of points. One, you can run uh, WordPress locally. All you have to do is look up a set of software called a either LAMP or WAMP setup. Yep. That means Windows, Apache, PHP, and MySQL, or Linux, Apache, PHP, and MySQL. Then you add, then you install another thing, and it'll bring up WordPress fully. Yep. Uh, one, one of the cheapest hosts that I found that handles WordPress is Namecheap. You pay four bucks a month, and you get a reasonable amount of space and everything. And if you're actually just looking to throw something up and play with it, you know that's a reasonably priced. And it also includes uh, if you buy a domain like 50 SSLs for the first year. So all your stuff can be secure out the gate. Yep. And we'll talk about that in, in a few minutes as well. Um, you know, what do you need to, to get a website up and running? Do you need a WAMP server or a LAMP server? Or also, so WAMP, as, as uh, Thomas just pointed out, WAMP is Windows. Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So that's WAMP for Windows. It's LAMP for Linux with the L, and it's MAMP for Mac, which is what I'm currently on. So this is basically a server that you download and you can use on your own laptop to develop your website. Uh, but 
that's a little a little further along than I wanted to go uh, just yet. Let's pop back here for just a minute. So, based just, on just one you, thing, Tom, the uh, sure. uh, map also runs on Windows, um, and I I've used uh, XAMP on uh, Windows. Okay. So. Great. So there, yeah, there are lots of options out there. Yeah, there's lots of uh, flavors out there. And yeah. here is the best part. 90% uh, of those are free. So mm -hmm. quite literally, everything that evolves around WordPress, WordPress itself is free. The, the uh, programming language PHP is free. There's no, of course, HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. That's also free. The the database that uh, it, it that uses uh, my MySQL is also free. There is literally no cost if you wanted to learn how to build your own website. There's literally no cost other than your time uh, to get a website up and running on your local machine. And then once you have that running and you understand how it goes. If you then pay for a hosting of your website, you can then just transfer it all up there. Um, it doesn't matter. PHP is, is operating system agnostic, meaning it, it'll run on Windows, it'll run on Linux, it'll run on, on, on uh, Mac. So it, it really is magical uh, how much you get with this WordPress package um, and it costs absolutely nothing. Even one of the most popular, if not the most popular e-commerce plugin that allows you to sell stuff online, uh, a, a plugin called WooCommerce, W-O-O Commerce, uh, is also free. Uh, absolutely free, out the door, and you could, you could literally be selling t-shirts or mugs or whatever online uh, in less than a couple of hours. And it will have cost you nothing other than the cost of your hosting. It's truly amazing. All right. Any other questions before I move on there? Uh, yes, I raised my hand. Oh, I'm sorry. For when I share here, I can't see what uh, what hand. Oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you. So um, can you see the code behind WordPress? I mean, Thanks. is it JavaScript code? HTML code, yeah. Like can you sort of de-engineer it. Um, you you don't even need to really de-engineer it to be All honest right. with you. Um, yeah, this is this is uh part of it here. This is strictly uh, CSS and and um, HTML and that type of stuff. You're you're still seeing my screen, right? So. Um, the back end, on the other hand, if I were to show you uh, an actual functions.php file. So now this is PHP. And this is, this is truly where you're getting into the nerdy stuff. Uh, but yes, all of this code is freely available to you and fully... Uh, you know, if I change if I change my um, theme here and look at some of the pages in here, so here's the theme footer. So you'll see that there's PHP and there's HTML and a bunch of other stuff all mixed in here. So the but, answer, the short answer is yes. It's very useful to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Yep. And we have another hand raised by Cam. Okay. I have a, I have a second question. I have a second. Okay. SQL, SQL, right? Yep. I haven't used SQL in my websites, but when you use SQL in your websites, I host my websites. I have a host server. Yep. You can you can create a database file, and then your users would could use the information in database file in their web on their web page on your web page. Uh, you could have a web page, you could have a website, and then you could have information in the SQL that you uh, send to the website and people would be able to see that information. Correct. And that that's earlier when you had talked about the, the H, just using HTML, CSS, and, and 
and um, JavaScript, this is the power of what WordPress brings to you. You literally, you will quite literally never have to write an SQL query in order for you to allow people to save uh, pictures and blog items and articles. But it's a little deeper than I really wanted to go right now, but write those questions down you have. Because at the end of this session, if it's 7.30, if folks want to hang around and talk that, we can. Or we can talk about it in the next section uh, session as well when we get more into what plugins are. And um, Julia, you mentioned that somebody else had a, a yes, question. Yes, Cam. I'll table that for the end of the session because it was uh, centered around WooCommerce and, and you said it was uh, free. Um, I, I, I had a little bit of experience with the WooCommerce and I thought I paid something for it. So, uh, but we can park it and come to the at the end. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Okay, so um, we talked about how many people use WordPress uh, how popular it is, that type of thing. But what is the difference? You'll see here that I have two links, one for wordpress.com, one for wordpress.org. So which is which, right? So what does, the, what does this URL or that domain, top level domain kind of sort of mean, the com? What does that mean? It, it means commercial, right? Like like stores use .com, things of that. Something that's selling something, if you will. So if I go to WordPress.com, you'll see that I'm I am actually currently currently logged into my WordPress.com website, and WordPress.com. If I change this. Uh, and it's not, I guess I'm going to have to log out here so that I can show you the actual site. WordPress.com is the commercial version, if you will, uh, that will sell you hosting capability using uh, WordPress. So this is basically a hosting uh a company that you can build your website with. You don't have to pay for, for hosting elsewhere. There are free versions, but uh, like anything that's free, you don't necessarily get all of the things that are available. So um, if you build a website on wordpress.com, um, the ability for you to add your own uh, castating style sheets, or your own functionality with plugins, or for you to do uh, uh, hooks in order for you to add a special functionality is far more limited on this wordpress.com. So for instance, you'll see here that they offer hosting plans, right? So if you want a website that's free, by all means, you can go right here and start a free website. However, that website is going to have the name of wordpress.com in it. If you notice here, this is Laram T, my last name uh, backwards, the letter T, little security through obscurity. But when I look at this website, um, it, it's a nice website. You know, this is, this is really just a demo, but it's a, it's a website that costs me nothing. I can do a bunch of things with it and it costs me nothing, but you see, I have to have that wordpress.com name in there. Now I can contract with WordPress and I can add my own domain name so that instead of having laram t uh, uh, laram I can have, you know, my favorite site.com or whatever it is that I want. But you'll see that they offer two plans. WordPress free or WordPress pro. And with the WordPress Pro, that's where you are allowed to add your own domain name. Your um, you can add uh, special code. You can add additional plugins and themes. So there is a cost involved, and it and it is fifteen dollars a month. Um, one of you just a little while ago mentioned. I think it was Thomas mentioned that you know you could sign up for a website on GoDaddy. 
uh, and and GoDaddy would cost you like I don't know three bucks a month, four bucks a month, right? So if I go here, for instance, and go to GoDaddy, uh, let's see, hosting. Where are we? Websites. Okay. And the packages. Wow. Oh. Um, Thank you, Thomas, for the link with nameschip.com. Yeah. Go, GoDaddy is expensive. And GoDaddy yeah. is also selling your private information. So I wouldn't yeah, go yeah, with GoDaddy. Yeah. Yeah. What I wanted to do oh, was. Yeah. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you here were the hosting options. So you can see WordPress.com was $15 a month, but you can get systems here that are $8.99. It goes a little higher, $5.99, right? So it, it'll run the gamut. Um, one of the things that you'll, you'll find with GoDaddy and Bluehost and a number of other uh, hosting companies that offer, you know, three or four or $5 a month you are on what's called a shared server, which means that you have a, they have a web server and they might have 500 different websites just like yours running on that same server. So you don't have it dedicated to you. So if you're running a website, let's say that you have a thousand products that you're selling, um, you don't necessarily want it on shared hosting like a GoDaddy or something to that effect, because if that's your meat and potatoes and you're making money from your e-commerce website, you don't want your website to be slowed down by the other 499 websites that are on your same server, because you're all sharing that little piece of processing power. So if you, if you are truly running an e-commerce and Basically, that's, uh, you know, that is your form of income for your livelihood. Um, I would venture to say that it is worth your while to get yourself either a virtual private uh, server or a dedicated server in which uh, you can do that. But the point here being that you can get uh, a free website from WordPress.com or you can pay the $15 a month fee. Or you can go to, uh, sorry, you can go to uh, the, I just lost that link. Where did I go? Here, here we go. Uh, or you can go to like a GoDaddy and get some, some additional prices. One thing you'll notice, uh, for instance, a, a hosting site that, that I use uh, is called SiteGround.com. Great prices, not too bad at all. But after that first two or three years that you've signed up for, the price goes up three, sometimes four times higher than you originally started with. So somewhere along the line, that cheap hosting that you got is actually going to cost you, be it the prices go up after the introductory or you're losing business or your site is down or it's not as responsive as uh, responsive as you want it to be due to it being uh, cheap hosting, all right? Now, we just spoke about um, wordpress.com. Let's talk now about wordpress.org. Now, org basically means it's an organization, right? It's a, it's a conglomerate, if you will. It's not necessarily uh, intended for profit. So WordPress.org is actually the organization that creates WordPress. And from WordPress.org, you can come here and download uh, WordPress itself. Right here, you see the link that says Get WordPress. If I click that. So here is where I can download WordPress. It recommends some hosting of, it, of its own. Right, there's some partnerships there, but here it is, priceless and free. And I can download it right there at no additional charge. Okay, I've downloaded it. How do I, well, now what do I do? And this, 
it says our famous five minute installation guide is in fact five minutes to teach you how to install it. It's absolutely incredible uh, how quickly you can get that done. Now, if you do have hosting, for instance, I have, uh, let me pull this into my other uh, window here. Hold on just a minute. Okay, so now this is the hosting that I currently have, and I created a subdomain towards the bottom here. You see it says NFL WP 101 Hudson Valley, right? So this is going to end up being a website, but in order for me to actually have it as a website, I need to install WordPress on it. So I'm just going to go to my control panel here on my hosting site. And here are all of the things of how to control my files and my email and my web tools, my databases, there are my domain names. And 90% of the time, your hosting company will have these one-click installs. These are all of the platforms and uh, content management systems that you you can uh, install uh, at no charge. Uh, let's see, we let's see if we see Drupal. So there's Drupal. We had a few of those. We talked about Drupal. Uh, there was um, there's Joomla. You can also install. So a bunch of these you can install. So I'm going to say WordPress. I just click on it. And then it's going to say, what domain do I want to install this on? And I'm going to just scroll down till I find my NFL WP 101. It says, what directory do I want to put it in? I don't need to indicate one. So it, it, it's just going to be by default. So I just press install. While that's going, I'm going to pop over here and try to go to NFL 101. Hudson Valley WP.com. So you see it says this site is brand new, right? So this is going to run for a minute. And what it's doing is it is actually taking the code that you can download from WordPress.org. Right? This uh where are we? Did I sorry? WordPress. WordPress.org. And the code that I just downloaded or can download from here is the exact same code that is being done with this install. So you see that I've done literally nothing here and it's now installed. If I come back to here where it says this site is brand new, and I press refresh. Come on. It's now going to ask me, what language do I want the website to be in? I say English. I'm going to say this is NFL 101. My username is going to be admin. I'm going to give it a password of that and uh, bogus at email.com. Okay, so your pictures are on top here. And now I'm just going to say install. So what Tom is addressing, there are two scenarios in this world when you are dealing with content management system. First, to have it in the cloud and you can use it with wordpress.org or .com. Which one to download the software and do it your own? And which one is 
to use on their hosting. Com goes to download, right? Um, com is actually the commercial. commercial. You can think of you can think of the com as the cost. C is in cost. It costs you to use WordPress.com. Hosting everything on their website. Correct. The other option, you still have the cost involved of buying the hosting and domain name and installing and making all these efforts. But in this case, you own it. And that's this scenario we're digging in right now in the rabbit hole. Right. Some of you are not interested in that. If you're interested in 101, go ahead with .com and explore it. Feel free to explore it. There will be okay. no cost involved at the beginning, but as soon as you want to have it more professional look, then the cost will come. Yeah. Now keep in mind that in just a couple of minutes here, once I finish this demo, um, I will be giving each of you your own full-blown website at no cost to you um, for the, the duration of this course and a few weeks after that for you to use it. So here is the install that we just went through. There's the username and password that I used. I just pressed log in. And now I actually have WordPress installed on this location at this location. And if I open that link, here is my website that just got installed. And aside from the couple of minutes that Yulia and I spoke there, it literally took two minutes for me to go to my host, say install, and then go from nothing to having a website. That's the extent of the install using the .org version. Anybody have any questions? I do. Um, the, the install basically consists of copying a bunch of files, probably many files um, it is. from the server, server where the WordPress application is to, to the server where you're installing it. I didn't see you do anything about protection or, or logging on to get access to the disk on that server. Right. So Did I miss that. Uh, yeah, no, you didn't miss it. This page that you're looking at right now is my hosting account. So prior to class, I logged into my hosting account. Think of this as my, for lack of better terms, ho uh, GoDaddy. I've logged into GoDaddy or the, the hosting that I use. And this is my control panel. And I just went down to this one click install. But if you want to see the guts and glory, if I go to my file manager, here is my HTML or my public folder for the websites. And you see here are all of the websites that I have on there. And let's see, there is the one that I just installed. If I look into that, these are all of the files that are involved with WordPress. That's the whole shebang right there. And the question okay. was so how to contact. Say that once again, Peter, I'm sorry. I, I just say you, you, you were in effect already logged onto the site by virtue yes, of being logged onto the control panel. That's correct, yes. And, the, so and this, therefore the installation could proceed. Yes, okay. so, the, so the security is that I, I need to log into whatever server I'm installing on, but Additionally, the security on WordPress in and of itself, if you notice this one column here called permissions, right, right here, uh, it's not, uh, uh, I just, I just moved the file. That one's not good. Um, but this is basically the permissions for these folders. These permissions, we won't get into them, but they basically say, the person who is logged into the website has permissions to read and write them. People who are accessing these files from the website, when I go to this page and I press this, when it, what? Well, that's a little wacky. Wow. Uh, that's kind of crazy. 
Um, is that the file that you inadvertently moved? Well, that is, uh, and that could be actually. Is it because... that file that I moved? It, it could be. But uh, these files, these permissions basically say, if I'm logged onto the server, I can read and write. If I'm a user of the website, I only have permissions to read things. That prevents people from overriding and hacking your site and that type of thing. Again, not really within the context of what I wanted to talk about tonight, but you, you can see that um, on this directory here, public HTML, you see that there are all of the files that are associated with all of the websites that I have hosted on this site. There's the learn uh, um, site that we, that we looked at earlier, the, this site right here. This site is built and is located in these directories here. Okay, does that make sense? Any questions? Victor, yeah, I, I see you a lot there. I just want to make sure you're tracking with me. Any questions at all? I don't mean to be picking on you, but you just happen to, for some reason, always be the one I see. No, no, I'm good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So now what I would like to do is uh, I just did the install. It wasn't difficult. It didn't take long. And you can do it yourself. You saw that. If you have hosting, you could literally do it in under five minutes. So what I want to do is if you find your name on this, on this page here, I'll try to get as much of this page on the screen as I can. Let me see here. I don't know if I've got everybody listed there. But if you see your name there next to that, you should be able to click on that link next to it or copy and paste it. And you can go to you, the website that has been assigned to you. Okay. And if you go to that website, your Let's see, how do I want to do this? I want to show you. Hmm. I'm going to uh, share from over here on a whiteboard. Okay, the username is going to be T d dash admin and the password is going to be capital i capital uh small sorry uh small l l the number two the letter e the at symbol and then the capital B, capital, whoops, capital K, bang, bang. So it's going to read, I like to eat at Burger King. That's how you would read it. And I'm, I'm going to paste it, uh, I'm going to paste it into the uh, chat window here in just a second. I did, I did. Oh, you did, okay. Okay, where do we go to see the websites? Check chat. Check yeah. chat. I don't think chat is actually showing it accurately because I think everyone has has their own based on the grid that I saw on the screen previously. Yeah, so the web, yes. So on the grid, let me uh, go back and share that or 
Yeah, the grid. Um, Team hyphen a number at something, something, something. I didn't wasn't able to write it down. Yep. You can't click on it. Yeah, let me pull it back up. Give me just a second. <clears throat> you should be seeing it yeah. once again. Yeah. Okay. So how do we? How do we get nine? How do we get there? Where okay, we so, see the grid. How do we get to where we see the grid? Uh, this is the learn dot. Uh, let me put the link in here in the chat. I'm at the learn. I'm at your site, but. I don't see the grid. Okay, so on scroll the... down, scroll down to install demo. Oh, install and then more. And I then see. more. Yep. Yeah. There you oh. go. Sorry about that. And I might be able to make this a little bit smaller. So you should be able to see the all of them. Basically, the the uh, the link is the team dash and the the word for the number 12, 13, 14, whatever the case may be. Actually, I see I added 13 in there, but I don't have a 13. Is Masood uh, currently in the in the session? No. OK. So no, no worries there. Has anybody had any issues not getting to their site? Well, you didn't put my name in. Uh, where are you? You I'm are James Hunter. He's James. not there. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you. He doesn't sorry, like you... It. Well, yeah, when did when did you sign up, James? Because I I I I made this list from the download of the of the website. Of the meetup.com. Yeah. I don't know. I don't okay. Know. So uh, let's see. Is uh, is Syed here? No. So you can use Syed one. So use number 19 right here. And I get, I'm getting um, user does not exist. Would you like to create a new account? Yep. Using TV okay. admin? Yep. It should. I, I just clicked on that. So let me confirm that this is going in. So TD admin. And then oh, lowercase exists. Okay. Um, lowercase, it should not matter. I can type TD uh, dash admin uh, upper lower, it should not matter. Well, I get user does not exist. Would you like to create a new account? Okay. Um, <clears throat> And I'm What's, on word, wordpress.com. I'm at team hyphen. Well, wait a minute. Not wordpress.com. No, well, I did HTTPS, HTTPS, colon. Slash, slash. Slash, slash, team hyphen nine. Nine. No. Yep, he, he's right. Team okay. nine. Team nine. Um, dot. Hudson Valley. Dot. Nope. Hudson w Valley WP. WP or dot WP? Nope. All one word. Hudson Valley WP. Uh, all that's one word. So Hudson Valley WP dot com. Right. Slash, slash login. Slash login. Slash login. And you are saying nine, but Tom is in 19. Yeah, okay, now I'm getting a username, blah, blah, blah. Everybody has right. their own, right? right? Correct, everybody has their own, but the user ID and the password are all the same. Correct. So Hyle has a question. Yes, yeah, go ahead. I don't, uh, I don't have uh, an uh, instance set up for me either. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, is Stefan here? No, Stefan. Okay. So uh, was it Kyle? Kale. Kale. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead and use 18. Okay. There we are. I don't have yeah. one. I don't have one either, but should I just go ahead on your site and set up my own? 
uh, go on my site instead there, there's, of there's a way in there's something you don't have secure <clears throat> on where on your hosting there's something that's not secure it gives me the option to set up my own site under your domain did you log in to uh... I, didn't I didn't log in at all uh Something's kind of wacky there. What yeah. what site are you on right now? I just sent you a private message with the link, so it's not out there for everyone. Okay. <clears throat> so let's make sure everyone got first to this website, which is learn.hudsonvalleywp.com slash wp-101 slash. As soon as you're there, either you have your name or you don't. Um, I, I don't have one either. I, I'm on a I'm on something that says "Welcome to WordPress." Is that correct, um, Thomas? Welcome to WordPress. That's <laughs> once you once you've logged in, right? Yeah, I'm logged in. It says "Welcome to WordPress." Learn more about the 5.9.3 version on the site. I have a dashboard with home updates, yep. theme apply license, posts, media, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes. So you have a That's site. That's what I have right there. Yeah, right yep. there. So this is the back end, right? The dashboard to see the front end in this top left-hand corner, you'll see where it says uh, whatever your team name is and visit site. Right. If you okay. click on that, it will take you there. Uh, excuse, excuse me, Thomas, I'm using Syeds, but when I put in the username, I'm putting in td-admin. Right. And then I put in a password and I click on login, but I don't go there. Okay. And uh, remind me, you are um, 18? You're, you're telling me you, you see C Y E D? See it? Yes. He was, he was what, number 13? Uh, no, uh, number 19. Okay. So on the screen, do you, are you going to this website? Team yes. 19. Yes. Okay. So if I... And then I get there and I see that and then I type in, well, I typed it in caps, but I'm typing in TD dash A D M I N and the password, give it to me again. It is right there on the screen for you. It's I L two E. At capital B K apostrophe apostrophe. Okay. So oh, I can okay. help. I can. Not, not apostrophe okay. exclamation point bang. Okay, explanation point explanation. And then I click yep. log. You can copy it from the chat. Okay, I'm there. I'm there now. Okay. okay. So now we need Clar uh, Grant want to assign and i bet there are still free names not taken yeah. names there how so, about e porters uh, which is seven e porter which is team seven grant are you good with that one team seven lucky number seven i am good with that all right uh so it's admin uh, uh tdn Okay. So. ED dash admin. Yep. Grab from chat. Christine, yep. what was your question? Oh, um, the pass. I typed in the password that was um posted in the chat, and it didn't log me in. But you got to the screen. Okay, just make sure to type it by your hands. What? I love what? to eat at Burger King. Bang bang. Mm. I is oh, capital. without the P. Oh, okay. I accidentally. I realized what I did. I put P W. No, no, no. No, the okay. password is I capital. Let me try it this time. Uh, which one should I use, Thomas? Okay. And Got let's it. see. Thank you. Um, is Sonia here? No. Okay. So if you would, I didn't catch the name who just asked me, but it is uh, Thomas asked Thomas. Thomas. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
So Thomas says, I think uh, I used Sonia. You can you what's that? I said I think I used Sonia. Oh, you use Sonia. So okay. team four is available, Carol. Were, were you not on here either? I was not. I, I joined the uh, meetup very, very late, like right now. Oh, okay. So is Norm here? Norm was here. Oh, um, he is there. Yep, he is there. You, you can take yeah, the Carol, Carol team 16. One. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Ta team uh, four is available. Team four. Team four. <clears throat> and that is Thomas, right? Yep. Okay. Does anybody else need a website? Free websites. Yay. Take it, take it, take it. Thank you okay, now, for doing that. Now, now just a, uh, just a, a little uh, request. You are the administrators on that, on that web server. You can do anything you want with it. You can install plugins. You can add pages. You can add posts. Please don't create any porn or poker sites <laughs> as a demonstration of your abilities. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the intent isn't for you to necessarily build a website. Um, you can, what, but whatever you do build, if you do something and you say, hey, Tom, I built this, I added this, is there a way for you to basically download it for me? I will do that for you if you want it. Uh, you will just need to let me know. Okay. Does, is there anybody that is not currently logged into a website? So those websites will be live next three weeks or four weeks. Yeah, so to be honest with you, I don't even look at these websites again until maybe a week or two before the next class that I give. So I would say that our next class is 26 April. I assure you that those websites are, are going to be around till at least the 1st of June. So, so you, you can experiment use this as a sandbox correct it looks like and, all set yep and just before i forget uh thomas burns yep yes if if uh if you and i can hook up and talk about uh exactly how or why that did that uh that was not a good thing that uh <laughs> uh that should not have been a, a allowed you didn't but, even have to run any scanners to find it. Just type yeah. in uh, the URL. Yeah, that, that's, um, that's scary, actually. Um, okay, so uh, I, I got your private message, and uh, we'll hook up, okay? Sure. All right. So now, what I want to do, just for grins and giggles, I'm going to uh, go to, let's see. Uh, I'm, is Judy W here? Nope. No. Okay. So I'm going to go to team 11 and I'm going to log in pd-admin and I like to eat at Burger King. Bang, bang. Now, I, I just, I'd be remiss uh, if I didn't talk to you about this a little bit. I'm actually a certified ethical hacker as, as well. Uh, there is such a thing. Um, let's talk about this password for just a minute. You see that it has upper or lower case. Uh, it has characters. It has kind of things. And if you say it, it's very easy for you to remember it, right? I like to eat at Burger King, bang, bang. The bang, bang is strictly just to identify it as having special characters at the end. So you could come up with your own basis for your complex passwords in order for you to um, to always have a safe password, right? It is important that it have a little bit of length. In this case, what is this? Like eight, nine characters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, no. One, two. Nine characters. The longer your password is, the typically the more secure it is if you're not using words. But you could use this as a basis for a password where you could say, 
I like to eat at Burger King and then the year, month, day, bang, bang. Or you could add the year, month, day at the beginning. You could add your, your um, you know, uh, um, the, the last four of your social, which is not a good idea. Um, but a lot of people do that. But you can add to this fundamental password that is secure or somewhat strong. Um, but you don't want to do stuff like, I love Chinese food, which is a fact. But all of those words are searchable in a directory uh, uh, or a dictionary. And it will take no time for them to be cracked. Um, much like the, uh, there are many ways to get into sites, much like the way uh, Thomas was uh, kind enough to point out to me how he was able to get in, but make sure that you're using a half decent password. Um, that's basically a, a fundamental thing that you should be doing. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm merely going to talk you through this dashboard for just a couple of minutes and then I'll wrap up and I just want you to be able to play with some of those things on the left during this next week and before we get together next week. Next week we will talk a, a, a lot more about each of those areas, users, the tools, some of the settings, things of that nature. But um, during this upcoming week, I would love for you to experiment on your own with what things are available there, okay? Anybody have any questions about that? No? Okay. So when somebody refers to go to your WordPress dashboard, this is really what they're talking about. They want you to go to the back end, the back end meaning the end that the user can't see, right? That's the back end, and this is the front end that the user sees. So on the back end, they say to go to your dashboard, and on this dashboard, it basically gives you access to all of those things uh, uh, that you need as the system administrator. So here you have home, which gives you just this basic overall, right? You have one post, you have one page, there's one comment, what version of WordPress are you running? What is the theme that you're running? If I look at posts, these are the items that, that you get posts that, that you create, perhaps an article or a, a document or a recipe or whatever it is that you want. Okay, that, um, let me scoot back over here to the 101. Get my screen back to normal size. And what we're looking at right now is basically this part right here, which is the back end or the dashboard, All right? So these items here, they aren't necessarily in the same order as what you see on your screen. But what this is basically saying is settings and users are used by the admin folks. That's the stuff that you would do to administer the website itself. Under appearance, under the menu uh, option appearance that you'll see here, that allows you to have layout, presentation, some functionality. Um, it, it, it has those abilities in there here. So if I, if I click on appearance, you see this allows me to actually change my theme. And on your instantiation or in your uh, server there, you should have many more than one um, uh, theme that you can experiment with. So you see that here is team 11. Here is my current site. If I change from this current theme to let's go with uh, Themeify shop. If I activate that, 
and save it. And now I come back to my team 11. You see a completely different website. It's not, uh, it's listed. It has different color scheme, different layouts. If I go back to uh, appearance and choose themes, if I can go back to one of the free um, themes that uh, WordPress provides, then I look back here again. And now you see that that's changed again, right? So the purpose behind this appearance is for you to have these various themes and the themes provide uh, layout and color and different functionality. So you'll need to experiment and play with those. And we'll talk about those more in depth um, once we talk next week. But I just wanted to expose you to this, okay? When you look at posts, a post is a piece of content. Let's say it's a blog article, right? Or a recipe. And a page is basically a, a, a post and a page are very close to being the same thing, but you should consider the page as being either a piece of content, a welcome page or contact us page, or it could be a container of posts. So that let's say you have a page that says my favorite recipes. And then your favorite recipes are actually written as posts. So the page will be a container for some of your posts. Okay. Now I know this is all going to be like, oh, geez, Tom, come on. You're talking posts, you're talking page, you got me running in circles. You'll need to take a peek at, at some of those links that are on the, on the Learn website and become familiar with, a little bit with, with those terms a little more in depth. Right, the comments piece, piece you don't really need to worry about just yet. And the plugins and themes, as we just spoke, under these themes, when I go to appearance and I look at these themes, these themes provide different colors and layouts and style so that the text automatically comes out looking a certain way throughout the theme, or um, you can have a very simple theme much like these that are named 29, uh, 2019, 2020. Those are very simple, not, uh, not a lot of functionality type uh, themes. And we will see that change here. So you see that one doesn't even add a background color. It's, it's really just kind of um, very bland, if you will. But that's what you start with. But then once you understand what a theme is and what a theme can do and add for you, um, it'll be a huge help. Okay. Same thing with plugins. Plugins, if you will, are things that are added functionality. I've added a few in here for you to play with. So here is one for an announcement bar. If you want to make an announcement on your website, how do you do that? Here's one that is a, a builder typewriter that you can put something on your website so that it types uh, text. I think I have, uh, let's see, Team Tom. Uh, Oops, I got that wrong, type that wrong. Okay, so I think down here, I, yeah, there you go. So this is kind of like a, this is the functionality of that typewriter plugin. And there are literally thousands of them. If I want to add a new plugin, I just say, add new at the top. And let's say that I'm looking, somebody mentioned something about membership. So if I just type in membership and hit enter, 
here are the uh, 987 items that were returned with that word mentor, uh, membership in there. Many of these will be free. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was about to say, you had said that anything that's in WordPress, they have to let you have as open source. So you may have to pay for it, but then after you pay for it, you can do anything you want to do with it. Is that right? In general terms, yes. There are some caveats, but in general terms, that's exactly it. So for instance, if I looked at the... Uh, at some of these plugins, here's a plug the, the file editor, right? So here is the, um, I don't know, let's, let's go with that builder typewriter uh, plugin. Here is the actual code that actually does that. And it's available to me. And I can come in here and change, you know, span border right width to, uh, you know, SP, SB, SBRW, if that's what I want to do. Whatever functionality I want to add or remove or whatever, I can do that because I have the source code. Cool. cool, cool, cool. Okay. Now, uh, a caveat to this, of course, is um, these plugins, though they're free, there are still some people that will put some nefarious bad stuff in there. So you you want to review and see, you know, how many people have installed this. You'll see here, this shows there's 100,000 active installations. This one is 200,000. So chances are that's a, a, a well done plugin that you don't need to worry about. If you find some no name plugin way down the list and it says two people have installed this, I would probably hesitate from installing it uh, because it it just isn't tested well enough. All of these plugins have to pass a vetting by WordPress.org in order for them to be listed here in the in this repository. So there is some sense of security there, but it's not foolproof. And sometimes if you read it, an article and it says, "Oh, hey, download this plugin and use it." That plugin may not be located within this WordPress.org repository. It may be on somebody's website, and invariably it may have some bad code in there that could, you know, say every time somebody posts something, I want you to send me a copy of it, or I want you to, if they if they type this certain word, I want the website to go out to a porn site or some other kind of thing. So you want to be very careful about the plugins that you actually install. All right. So we are at, I have 734 right now. We're kind of at a, at a stopping point. Um, I'll give you a couple minutes. If you have some, some last minute uh, questions for me, I'll be happy to answer them, but I won't go. I, I'll continue. I'll stay on with you and we can continue to talk. But for those that have to go, I won't continue with the content of what I was going to speak to on the course. We will just talk about whatever people are asking me for. Okay, so if you do have to leave, you're not going to miss any of the stuff that I would have covered in class, if you will. Okay, do I have any questions at all? Do we get to keep the sites that we create? Ask Christine. Um, yes. So if you let's say that you here on I'm on team 11, I install these plugins, I create a front page, uh, I do all these things in the next couple of weeks, and I want it, then just shoot me an email, and I can export the site in, in its entirety, and uh, mm -hmm. provide you a copy of it. That's not a problem at all. Jeff, uh, you raise the hand. Is is oh, April... Jeff, Jeff raised the hand, sorry. Jeff, Thomas. go ahead. Yeah, Thomas, just a quick question. Like if I um, if I, I change the theme on mine as a for instance, and then I notice that um, there's a customized theme um, kind of applet or panel, if you will, to the left. Just a quick question. Is, is that more or less an orchestration tool that is allowing us to just uh, modify the CSS that is part of the theme? Um, you know, without it, having... It, yeah, yeah. It, 
it could be sorry what theme did you install or what time did you um, i installed the uh team i i don't know which one it is it's, uh um let me go back here um team 11. Okay. i just wanted to see the screen team of five parallax i, I theme picked the theme of five parallax right okay but now if i go over to you know after it loads i mean i think it's the same for anyone though it doesn't really matter like if I go over to uh, customize in the theme, right? Correct. You know, um, then it brings up a bunch of stuff there. Like you can change the header, the size of the header, the positioning, et cetera, et cetera. So is, is this more or less just an orchestration tool that is changing CSS for the existing theme is what I'm saying. That's you know? you're, you're exactly right. So in uh, if you're looking at your screen, if I go up here to body and I say I want the body background to be a color, yeah, right, and I change yeah. it to red, yeah. Basically, this is a builder that's yeah. saying, Oh, let me go ahead and add the code that causes the CSS to create a background of red. Okay. And, exactly then I also, red. and then I also see down at the very bottom there is the ability to actually add your own custom CSS as well. So, that, um, that is okay. correct. I, 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 I just wanted to make sure I, I, I was uh, understanding the paradigm correctly. So that's yep. now, now keep in mind, um, I, I, I missed your name already. I'm sorry, Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. Yep. So Jeff, keep in mind now, you just installed uh, a plugin, a, uh, a theme called Themify Parallax. Mm -hmm. The the ones on here that are named uh, Themify, let me mm -hmm. get back there. Those are actually commercial um, um, plugins that that actually cost about fifty to sixty dollars each. However, I am a uh, a life member of Themify, so I can download them all and I can provide them to my clients at no cost or at cost my option. So those being commercial um, uh, themes are going to give you additional functionality. So uh, you have all of those things over here that you can do. If I change the theme on my screen back to 2020, which is a very simple theme provided by, uh, provided by WordPress in and of itself, you'll see that when I go to customize, there's less options See, available, yeah. There are f far fewer, but there's still the basic things, right? Yep. That uh, you can still add your own additional CSS. You can change yep. the, comp right? There's the, I changed the color of the template, that kind of thing, right? So the conceptually, it, they will all work the same, but with a professional theme, if you will, you will have far more functionality and far more options. Yeah, let's just say for somebody that doesn't know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, they can they can pay a little extra, not have to worry about the nuts and bolts underneath. But somebody that understands it can build it up from scratch and get the same same thing for nothing. You, know? you are exactly right. So, yeah. for instance, um, with that Themify Parallax. If, if I go to a post, if I create a new post, if you follow on my screen, here's the post, yeah. but along with this post, you see there's an area for me to type, but you see some extra tabs down here and one of them says Themify Builder. That is basically a drag and drop uh, um, creator of content. So here's a row, I can just, say, okay, I want to put in a, um, let's see, I want to put in text, which is basically HTML. And now here it is. I can, uh, I can type or do whatever it is that I want this, oh, sorry, this, uh, good God. This is cool, right? I can change the, the heading, I can make it bold, but I can also go into styling here and it says, okay, what do I want for the background? And all I'm doing is clicking and searching how many columns do I want, right? So all of that comes as just a builder. 
And if I decide, you know what, I don't want a single column, I want to have, uh, I want to have three columns. I just choose three columns, and yeah, now I can move this one over here. From the look uh, of it, it looks like it's a built-in bootstrap almost. You know, I mean, it, it is. It, it's a it's a front end to a bootstrap type uh, environment. Yes, you're exactly right. But yeah. you see, I can drag yeah. and drop, and if I create one. I can duplicate it and create it over here, right? And now if I, um, let's see, just I'll do a Tom test page and I'll publish that. And if I go to visit that page, uh, nope, let me come back here. I have so many, that's a bad thing. I, I have 9,000 frames of, so you see it says, this is cool, this is cool. Yeah. You say, oh, uh, I really didn't want them side by side. I want to move this one over here. So now I press save. I come back to here. And now there it is. And I've written no code. Mm -hmm. None. Yeah. This is the power of the builders. And that's, that's really why I included uh, many of those themes in here so that you have something to play with. Okay. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? I, I have no heartburn hanging around. So don't feel like, well, you know, he's already been here an hour. I don't want to, I don't want to be that guy or that gal. Feel free. And well, last... uh, I have a question. Yes. And this is? I'm pretty impressed with what you showed us. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm just wondering if by using WordPress, there's anything that we're sacrificing in terms of flexibility or ability to do something. It's probably a good trade-off. I just want to understand what, what it might be. If there's anything, maybe there's nothing. Yeah, so um, it's a great question. So part of the trade-off, and this will this is something that you know some of the, the web developer purists will talk about is, uh, and as, um, Hunter, I forget your first name, James, um, as he brought up about initially websites with strictly HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you only use those three, your website should be lightning fast. It won't have a ton of functionality, but it will be lightning fast because there's no he nothing heavy. There's no processing in the back end happening. Nothing is being... PHP code is not being read and then compiled so that the pages, there's no database being touched, which also takes time. So many of the purists will say, if it's anything other than a straight HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, the website is just too heavy, it's going to be clunky, it's going to run slow, that type of thing. Honestly, I, I've been doing this a long time. I will tell you that that argument is valid to a certain degree, but the gains that you have by the power of you being able to do things. And I'll give you, I'll give you a great example. So here is uh, team 11. If you can look at the, the page here, here's team 11 and there's a sample page. I want to add Tom test page up here to the menu. If I were writing this in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, I'd have to go find that page. I'd have to write the HTML manually. I'd have to line it up. Sometimes if the, if the words are too long, it could run to a second line. Or I can just come over here to appearance and menus. And you see that I'm just going to, it doesn't even have a menu, this is brand new. So I'm going to create this menu called, I'm just going to call it main nav. And I'm going to create menu. Now I'm just going to add things to my menu. So I'm going to view all of the pages. Uh, I'm going to add sample page and home and add to menu. I now want to go to that test page that I made and also hello world. And I add it to the menu. Now I save that menu and I go to my site 
And of course that didn't work. Let me look here where I put that location. There we go, sorry. So I have to add, there are two locations in this theme that menus can go. And I need to select the menu that I just created to go in the main navigation. So I'm just gonna press save. And now you see, I now have a menu. And I wrote no code. I literally checked blocks. But you know, this doesn't look good to me. I kind of, I want Tom's test page to be under sample page. So how do I do that? I just edit my menu and I say, Tom test page, I click and hold it. And now you see, I can drag and drop it wherever I want. If I, if I indent it from sample page and drop it, I press save. Now I go back to my menu. And now you see under sample page is Tom's test page. I guarantee you, I don't care how good a coder you are, you are not going to accomplish that in those four or five steps. And in that 60 seconds, it took me to create that. I guarantee it. Sure. Right? <laughs> and, and the same kind of thing, you know, you just drag and drop. Um, it can go, you know, three rows deep, right? So now my entire menu is under home, if you see here. And I, I'm just gonna refresh the page. Now there's only home. Look, there's home, sample page, Tom test page, and hello world, right? It's, it's acting kind of funky because it's too close to the, to, the, to the side over here, but you get the point, right? That, right. Uh, whoops, uh, history, you see closed. Um, you get the point that, so for instance, let me just move that one over a pinch. And now save that. Now here's home, here's the double page, and then there's hello world. And, and how long did that take? It, it takes me longer to explain it to you than it, <laughs> than it was for me to drag and drop, right? So um, the argument that yes, it could be a little heavier, it might take a few milliseconds or a second or a half a second longer for your page to load, but you as the maintainer of that website, and especially if you're not a developer, this is magic. I'm a developer and honestly, I feel like this is magic because <laughs> all I have to do is drag and drop. The computers are getting cheaper and people are getting more expensive. So it's clearly a good trade-off. Yes. Great. Saying that, let's thank Tom for a great class given, hands-on, real hands-on. And I will stop recording thanking our sponsor once again, which is Newburgh Free Library.